Some of us, the challenge we have is that our preparation and expectation are in the wrong place. We have inadequate preparation and insufficient expectation. We don't know exactly what God's going to do, and we ain't really expecting him to do a lot. And that challenges our relationship with God because he is the God that can do anything, anywhere, with anybody. It's challenging. This shift was Simon Peter. And he asked him and he prayed to him. He said, would you thrust out a little from the land? And he sat down and taught the people on the ship. Now, he had already been teaching in the streets, and the people were thronging him, pressing him, and, and crowding him. And he said, you know what? Hold on. I need, I got to get to where the people can see me. You know, because there's, there's some folk back there that can't see me. See, let me tell you something. Never be a church that doesn't set up ministry so that the person all the way back there can see Jesus. Sometimes we set up church and people can see people. But they can't see Jesus. He says, he says, Simon, this your boat? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm a fisherman, you know that. Because Simon's already, they've established a relationship. So yeah, this is my boat. He said, uh, thrust out a little bit. Let me get on your boat because uh, I don't want to go fishing, but I need to finish this message. Now, what am I trying to say here? God's trying to use your life as a platform. Yeah. He came to Simon because he needed a pulpit. Yeah. I'm going over here. He came to Simon because he needed a pulpit. Yeah. And what I want to ask you is, is your life open and ready enough to let God preach from you? Yeah. Tell, your neighbor, tell your neighbor God's trying to preach here. And he needs your boat for his pulpit. Oh, nobody like that because you want to promote your agenda, but your life should be the pulpit of God's message. Ain't nobody talking back to me. Now, what I like about Simon Peter, he's a different type of church folk. He ain't the type of church folk we're dealing with today. We're dealing with the church folk that Paul told Timothy about. These church folk fished all day, fished all night, got nothing came back tired, shut the boat down, washed out the nets, was ready to go home, and while they were ready to go home before they locked the door, Jesus came and said, will you open back up for me? I want to know after life has worn you down and you are mad, frustrated, and upset, can God still lose, use you when you mad, when you tired? Yeah. I like these type of church people because they can have church tired, church tired frustrated. Ain't nobody talking back to me. These are the people that God can use that'll say I'm always ready for a move of God. I don't care how tired my body is. I always want a move of God. I wish there was 20, 30 people in here that felt the same way. Ask somebody to say open back up. Now nobody want to do that because you, you got embarrassed before. But I hear the Lord saying open back up. Touch your neighbor, say, God needs a pulpit. Come on, live a life that's gonna, that God can stand on and declare that he who has begun a good work shall come. He needs a pulpit. He needs a pulpit. He needs a pulpit. He needs a pulpit. We got preachers looking for a mic, and Jesus can't use them for their pulpit. They got good sermons and horrible lives. He needs a pulpit. Oh, for want of a pulpit. I need a better pulpit. I need, Simon, I need your position and your possession as a platform. Now, being on the boat made it difficult because some people would say, oh, yeah, could you build a stage? Because I need the people to see me. And see, sometimes this is where we don't like it because to really be seen does not mean to be hired. It just means to be in a different place. It means to be just a little thrusted out. Now, for some of you deep folk in here, you like to launch. He didn't say launch now. He said, just thrust out a little bit. I need you to come away from the shores of carnality. I need you to just thrust out a little bit because people that launch out too quickly, they end up damaging souls that need to hear what you got to say in the thrust. Because they just need to know that this is somebody at least with a consecrated life. You ain't perfect, but you ain't carnal either. 
You ain't all holy, but you are not common either. I need an elder that I know will pray for me because I know you won't cuss me out. I need you to be just a little bit. He says, Simon Peter, thrust out just a little. Just a little bit. I need you to thrust out. Don't nobody like that. Don't nobody like that. He says, this, this, this challenge of land and shore, land and water. He said, now the people on the, on the land, they need to see me. He said, I ain't worried about them hearing me because I got a big voice. Dead people hear me. <laughs> so I just need to get somewhere where they can see me. I got an amplifier system in my throat. People hear me in the grave, so I ain't worried. He said, I just need to get someplace that need to thrust out a little bit so I can get someplace where they can see me. I'm preaching better than you helping. Tell somebody, get someplace where somebody can see Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to come off the shores of carnality and get into the liquidity of the realm of the spirit. Tell somebody, I need you to thrust out a little bit. This represents the apostolic thrust of the saints, that you have to have the ability to move away from the solid certainties of the carnal realm into the liquid assuredness of the realm of the spirit. There's one thing that if you're going to flow in the spirit, you got to be able to flow with the spirit. Because you are not a son because you have the spirit. You are a son when you are filled with it and led by it. You got to be able to. Tell somebody you got to thrust out a little bit. Come on, I'm not, listen, I'm not asking you to do, to go cold turkey on everything, but you gotta, you gotta come out a little bit. Yeah. Just thrust out a little bit because I need you to keep your apostolic thrust. And, and, and when we hear apostolic, we think Jesus only or we think title, position. And everybody has an apostolic thrust. It is the ability not to separate yourself from the body, but you understand your assignment that you consecrate yourself to God for the body. Because to be apostolic means I go somewhere to go somewhere. And when I go there, I get something and I show you a side of God you ain't never seen. Tell somebody I need your apostolic thrust. I'll, I'll give y'all this nugget. Don't tell them I told you. One time, there's only one time, I went to Biloxi. And uh, I went to get away. I went to get away. Uh, because what I didn't know is Biloxi has a beach. That's really what I wanted. And also what I didn't know is Biloxi had a beach, but they had nasty water. I don't believe in getting in beach water, but I can't see my feet. I don't believe in it. Because you know I'm in here. I need to know you in here, too. No. Nah. Both of us need an awareness. Huh? I need to see a jellyfish coming. I see you, Doc. I'll be out. I'll come back when you're done. Let you have this. So, but the hotel I stayed at, the hotels weren't on the beach. All of them weren't on the beach. But the hotel was on the other side of the highway at the beach. It had a walkway to the casino. And it wasn't until... I ordered food at this, they had a restaurant to see, so I ordered food. Because I had a good old jambalaya at that restaurant. Ooh, it was so good. Don't worry about it. I ain't no gambler. So, I ain't listen. I put a quarter in one of them things that I didn't win. I said, this ain't for me. I'm not calling this. <laughs> I mean, people are in there. There's some people that was in there 24 hours. The same outfit I saw the lady with yesterday, she right back at that. Look at you, look at God. And, and you got people that know you, got, they got a greater risk of losing, but they're more dedicated. You can go to a casino where people will invest in the risk and you come to church, empty slot machines. Move it on. Tell somebody there's a risk in here. But my faith requires risk. Because there's got to be an opportunity for this to go the wrong way. But tell somebody I will invest in the risk of Christ before I do a slot machine. So what I noticed was all the casinos were on barges 
Now, they had ecstatic appeal, so it looked like a building. There was one casino that looked like a ship, but the others looked like buildings. And so the man said, oh, no, we're on a barge. So I said, well, we're right at the water. He said, yeah, we're, we're on a barge. He said, all the casinos are on a barge because on land in Biloxi, the casinos are illegal. Water has different rules than land. I was trying to get you. That's why he just needs the church to thrust out a little bit. Touch your neighbor and say, God wants us to thrust out a little bit because the kingdom has different rules than the world. I dare you to nudge for people. Tell them, thrust out, thrust out, thrust out, thrust out, thrust out. We got different rules. There's different rules on the water. And maybe, just maybe, just maybe, your life is in an illegal place because you've had spiritual expectation in a carnal platform. But touch your neighbor and say, I need you to thrust out a little bit because there's different rules on the water. God will make something come forth that's illegal just right over there. Any of y'all ever seen the end of rain? It'll drive you mad. I've, had, I've seen it four times in my life. The end of rain. See, when you're in rain, you don't know rain has an end until you get to that. And what I know about the end of rain is if it's still drizzling, it ain't the end of rain. The absolute end of rain is the absolute opposite of rain. There's no water coming down at all. And sometimes, three times, the end of rain was the beginning of sunshine, and I could not understand how on one side of the street it was sunshine, and the other side of the street it was dark and raining. Tell your neighbor, thrust out! Because even rain has an end. And the end of rain don't look nothing like in the rain. Tell somebody, thrust. I done preach two messages. I can't preach as hard as I want to. But tell your neighbor, thrust. When you sing choir, you got to sing with a thrust. When you pray in a session, you got to pray with a thrust. When you preach, preacher, you got to preach with a thrust. Got to understand there's a spiritual assignment to this normal activity. He says to him, now, after he finished preaching, he said, uh, now, let's launch out into the deep for a drop. In other words, he's saying, where you just came from and didn't get nothing, let's go back again. But this time, I'm going with you. Because some people don't know what drought means. I'm going to pay you back for letting me rent your boat. Let's go out there so I can bless your ministry and your business because you allowed your life to be my platform. Touch your neighbor say, now let's launch out now. See, we want to be deep on people. No, 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 no. He's saying, let me minister to the people through you. But after you let me use you, I'm going to take you back to the spot that didn't produce nothing. And I'm going to make the place of nothing pay you back. And all I came to tell you is you're going to get record-breaking success in a place that didn't give you nothing. I wish I was that loving faith we would have some church today. Tell your neighbor, you're about to get record-breaking success in a place that didn't give you nothing. And all I came to tell you is launch out and try it again. Launch out and do it again. We like to think about trials. And God is not into trials. He is, he's into tries. And God told me to tell you, go do it again because there's an anointing on your next try. The next attempt has a special anointing on it. It didn't produce a few minutes ago, but try it now. It didn't produce a few moments ago, but try it now. Tell three people, it's an anointed attempt. The next attempt, the next assignment is anointed. Now, you know why I'm mad with some of y'all? Because I felt your spirit shut down. Because you want God to do something in another place. He said, for me to get the glory, I got to do it 
where see people saw you come in with nothing. Tell your neighbor, we're at the same church with the same people, but because of God, because of your ability to launch out in the deep, you can be at the same place doing the same thing with better results. Tell your neighbor, don't be common. Let's praise him again. Let's trust him again. Let's try him again. Say it. See, when you become common with church, I heard that song last week. The song last week will shift you into a praise and the anointing on it this week will shift you into a new place. We serve the God of same places but different results. Joseph said he did not let me go back to my land but he blessed me right here in my land of affliction. I can't, I can't. Because I'm about to get into next week. He's God is breaking expectations the and difference records. from then and now is this to, this attempt got a word on it. He set your life up with nothing. And he said, I needed that nothing. You don't like nothing, but I needed that nothing for my miracle. Tell somebody God's about to do something with you, nothing. See, some of y'all acting like y'all ain't been embarrassed from trying and getting nothing. Now, some of y'all got nothing because you don't do nothing. But there's some of us in here, we get nothing from doing the right thing. But tell your neighbor, that's not always. There's sometimes he needs your nothing. Anybody in here got a nothing area? I tried and nothing. I prayed and nothing. I fasted and nothing. But tell your neighbor, do it again. Because your next try has a special anointing on it. It's going to produce for you. I need everybody that believes in shout glory. Shall go ah, hey. My next try is anointed. If you're expecting the same results, you have insufficient expectation. He's ready to do something new with something old. And the reason you won't notice it is because you and your old thing still expect an old result. God wants to pervert the old attempt. And what did not produce, the word of God will create a, a womb in a barren place. And he'll make a fruitless attempt turn into a fruitful situation. Nobody talk to me.